Okay. Well, a safety alert tonight over those flashlights rigged with explosives. We've been working today to gather more information on how to protect yourself from this possible serial bomber. Right. We're also learning what crime lab technicians are analyzing and also the concerns from investigators. Chris Orsain joining us now. And Chris, you've been talking to some of your sources. What are they saying? Well, Stephanie, looking back at some of the past serial criminals in these cases, they tend to graduate to bigger and bigger things. For example, the serial shooters here in the Valley years ago started out killing animals than people. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, got worse and worse. Well, investigators also believe this bomb maker is tracking media reports, trying to get information on this investigation. So far, three of these have blown up, one in Janelle McKee's hand. The biggest part left of it was the handle where I was holding on to it. Janelle is okay, but will never forget that Mother's Day explosion when she found that yellow flashlight. She says it sounded like a shotgun and pieces scattered 25 feet. An ATF lab is searching for DNA, hair, and fingerprints on the remnants of the three flashlights that exploded. Billboards are now in place to warn people, and I'm told all of the devices were built by the same person and are consistent in design. And take it from Janelle. If you see one, don't touch it. The second that I pushed the button, it exploded. There was no delay, no nothing. And pieces just flew everywhere. As soon as it exploded, I dropped it, kind of went like this to cover my face. Well, I've also learned bomb squads around the valley have been briefed on the components of these explosives, but that information, just like the results from the ATF crime lab, are being kept confidential, at least until an arrest is made. Steve and Stephanie. And if there is an arrest, they're going to face federal charges, including up to a dozen felonies. Chris, thank you.